Our scripture of the evening is a brief one, but it has a little bit to do with trending leading into our guest tonight. It's Galatians 6, verse 4. Pay careful attention to your own work. Right. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And Uh. you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Right. Uh, Again, short but sweet. Pay not just attention, but careful attention to what you do. And then the satisfaction is going to follow. And what is the satisfaction? It's not bragging about what you've accomplished. It's not boasting or sharing it with everybody else. It's knowing in your own heart and your own soul that you gave it all you had, that you accomplished the most you could possibly accomplish. And that's the best thing you can say about anyone in athletics or in life is that they maximize their potential. I hear the phrase all the time uh, that I, I just completely you know, disagree with, and, and that is that, you know, outkick their coverage or, or you know, really out, outstriped what they were capable of doing. Nobody exceeds what they are capable of doing. If you accomplish it, that means you had the ability to do it. You just maximized your potential. And the guy that joins us now certainly is one of those individuals who did so at Bolton High School and then, of course, at LSU and, and on the professional baseball level, including – Parts of five years in the major leagues. It's great to welcome our brother in Christ, Warren Morris, to the show. Warren, great to have you with us. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thanks, guys, for having me. Looking forward to visiting with you. Well, it's great to have you with us. And first and foremost, tell everybody what you're doing these days, where you're at, and what's going on. Oh, I'm back home where I you know, grew up in Alexandria, Louisiana. I'm a dad, father, husband. I've uh, got three beautiful girls and my wife and I, and I've been working 15 years at Red River Bank here, uh, you know, just helping people uh, achieve their dreams and buy houses and, you know, things that uh, will help them further their business and their own life. Oh, and uh, So it's been, been rewarding, good to be in a hometown setting with a, a, a good good group and uh, obviously very involved in my church here, Calvary Baptist Church. So uh, all things are good. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. And obviously <laughs> these, are, these are strange times we – find ourselves in right now certainly hasn't hit the banking business it's hit others and we talk about it weekly and we pray about it and and one of the things we've talked about frequently warren is the fact that you know god didn't give us a spirit of fear the only thing we have to fear is the lord Uh, and yet we see a lot of fear not only in the faces of people but in their voices and in their actions and that's something that is not of the lord it's also something we we pray about daily that people would would come to an understanding of of being bold and, and not allowing the conditions of this world to overcome them. Yeah, no, you're right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of uncertainty out there. And you and I, we, we can't tell what's going to happen in the next hour or, you know, right. week. But uh, I just find great peace and comfort in knowing that uh, my trust is not in man or, or myself, but in in my Lord and Savior. And I know he, he's got this. Uh, he's got a plan. He's got a purpose behind all of it. And, he even uses, you know, things that uh, seem to sure. be for evil to turn around and, and work his good. So, uh, you know, in that, I think we all can find hope. And hopefully us that are uh, believers, we can show the love and show that hope to others that are in, in, right. in the fear and, uh, you know, help turn this thing around. <laughs> hey, Warren, it's good to hear you, man. And we all know what we were looking at, you know, 24 years ago. But, you know, I don't, you're probably not being quite truthful. You can face anything in this world right now because you live in a house with four ladies, man. You've got your hands <laughs> full and you don't have a chance. So you're not worried about anything else you see on the news, are you? <laughs> no, no. My, I've learned my, the best words I can use are yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you don't stand a chance, pal. <laughs> no, not at all. God love it. Warm yeah, no, I, I've been very, very blessed, and uh, you know, just <laughs> you know, it, you, you, you kind of go through life, and uh, you know, you, you get married, and then you, you have kids, and you know, just it's it's cool to see how they they develop, and you know, sure. ours we grow uh, brought them to church, and they've grown up and have friends that are believers as well, and uh, that's so you good. Know, they, and they they still go out in the world, and and, and just like yeah. we all do, but. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's cool to see how you put the word in them. I, yeah, well, yeah. and even before I was born, you know, God yeah. knew that I was going to be here today talking sure. about this and the situation. So, uh, yeah, He's a great God. 
Kenny, I love that picture that done one of the news the news stories about Warren. Picture of a guy with a number four on with both hands up in the air and the look on his young face. I mean, what a, what a journey that started that day. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, it just just the story itself is all God, and you know, the, the more I, I really believed he, he had a plan and a purpose, and I don't know why he chose me to be part of it. Maybe it's so. Now today, I can tell people that God's got a plan and purpose for for our life and your life, and uh, you know who, who knows where it's going to lead. I mean, that season started out, and I thought I was going to be the leader on the team and you know do all the, the the things to get us to the World Series, and then I end up getting hurt, and missed most of the year, and you know even in that, um, turned it over to God, and you know he, who knows uh, I ended up being batting ninth in the order that day and uh, come up to the plate. <laughs> Uh, with a uh, runner on third down by one and hadn't hit one home run all year and wasn't trying to hit a home run, honestly. And the uh, ball comes off my bat and it's over the fence. And now, you know, 24 years later, people still tell me they remember where they were. And uh, so, I mean, it, it's just, just amazing. It's just an example. And, you know, he, he's worked through down times in my life. But, uh, you know, just through that, I think it, it's put a great testimony uh, you know, it's not who I am, but that's the platform he's given me to share, and uh, I hope I, I'm able to, to use that to share that hope with others. Warren Morris with us. You've been doing that for quite some time, and don't shy away from the moment, and I think that's a, a great thing. And yet it all started, of course, you mentioned Alexandria, and you were a Bolton Bear. When did you know that you were good enough, and what was it like when Skip Bertman offered you a scholarship to LSU? Well, I can just I can tell you that the only reason I got a scholarship was because I made good grades. I was on an academic scholarship the whole time I was at LSU, and uh, you know even that thinking back, if if I hadn't really cared about school or my studies, I would have never even got the chance to to be an invited walk on and, and be on that team. And you know that first year, I red shirt and wonder if I was ever going to be good enough to play. Uh, in fact, the very first meeting I went to. I remember I was a lot smaller than the guys on the team. I knew I needed to get stronger and bigger. And I spotted one guy on the other side of the room that looked like he was my size. So after the meeting broke up, I went and asked him, you know, where he's from, what position he played. And no lie, the guy looked at me and he said, man, I'm not on the team. I'm the equipment manager. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that, that was our first meeting before we ever even had a practice. So I, I knew the odds were against me, but, uh, you know, you, you put your nose down, do what you're told to do, work hard, work extra. And uh, several years later, you know, I was I was in there. I was one of the key players. And then, uh, you know, it's just it, it's cool now to look back and see, you know, my picture up in the stadium and things like that. You know, if, if, if you could have gone back in time and told the me in that room that day as a freshman with wide eyes who wasn't even sure if I belonged there, that I would be one day remembered for something great at LSU, I, I would have said, no, nah, you, you, you must be talking about somebody else. But, uh, you know, God had a plan. The scripture said no need to compare yourself to anyone else. Of course, there was a second baseman at LSU named Todd Walker. Mm -hmm. That's your natural position. You had to sit and watch him. And even, as I recall, they wanted you to play outfield until such time as it might be vacated where you could play second base. Of course, he leaves. You take over that position and Lo and behold, you don't miss a beat, have a great year uh, in 1995, and yet you had to fill some pretty big shoes there from a guy that was a legendary figure in LSU history as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that, that, that really was a blessing to be able to be so close and every day go to practice and watch what, in my opinion, I'm biased, but was, is, was the greatest college baseball hitter you know, uh, uh, of any of, of anybody I saw, just see how he went about his business. How did he, you know, go through drills? How did he, you know, take back and practice? How did he, what was his mentality through games? Like that helped me, uh, uh, you know, tremendously as I was growing and trying to get confidence to be at this level. But yeah, you know, then it's in another adjustment. Once he's gone, he gets drafted in the first round and, you know, they're looking at me to be the next Todd Walker. And I, I quickly realized, I, you know, that's not me. I, I put on my shoes and I have to be myself. And once I got comfortable with that and then did well, then uh, the confidence was there for me to go and, you know, lead and, and, and do the things that, that I can do. But, uh, you know, you, you just never know how um, even your times of waiting and, and when it seems like 
is this ever going to pan out? Those are right. the times that really prepare you for when you are in the spotlight. So I would have yeah. never been able to do the things I did without, you know, the, the time where I was on the bench, if you will, or, or, you know, watching Todd trying to get to be better like, like he was the player. I, I hear a story like this, Ken, and it really encourages me. Encourages me. You you made a statement though, and it's funny that you said it because it it grabbed me because I heard the same statement made yesterday, and I was doing some exercise and I had the TV on, and I was actually watching a, a football interview show, and they were interviewing a current NFL great play, ball player, and he was actually talking about an LSU rookie that is on the team right now, and he talked about the maturity, and he actually made the statement. He said, "I," and he said, "He goes about his business like a pro when when, when we watch how he carries himself," and you said you, that we go about our business that that that's a theme not only on the ball field but it's on life because we're we're they're watching us i mean if people don't believe the bible they're watching walking bibles in our lives and and we get judged by that in fact god gets judged by the way way we walk what does it mean when you talk about went about their business and, and it seemed like he was saying this kid came he knew exactly what to do he carried himself he wasn't off into other things i mean and it seemed to be about focus that sounds like what you were saying yeah, no, that, that that's it. You know, just having a, a focus, knowing um, that you're not just going through a practice because it's some time in between games, but I'm going to try to get better today. And I know that the more I can do today is going to help me tomorrow. And then when the game comes, I don't have to scramble because I've already, uh, the expression I always used was, I put the hay in the barn. I've done all the work. <laughs> but now when the game's here, yeah. and you got runners on second and third down by one and it's a full count. Instead of panicking now, you just let yourself go because you've already put all the work in. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that, that's you know that that's part of being uh, you know an athlete and, and trusting yourself to to use your God given talents and letting it happen. You're do, and you're I, doing I, that in the bank. Believed, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and that's what I was going to say. I've always believed that athletics gives you a huge um, advantage on other things. You know, in life, you know, Coach Bertman used to always tell us. It's the little things that are the difference in the wins and the losses. And, you know, in, in my job, writing a thank you note, making an extra call, that may seem like not a big deal, but it really is a big deal. Like, people appreciate those things. And, you know, those things that I learned to help me be uh, a winning player or a winning uh, our team to win, it's the same things that help your company win, that help you be a good parent, help you be a good friend. Uh, so it transfers over. Warren Morris with us. And, of course – you had a chance to play a part of five seasons in the major leagues, really good rookie year with the Pirates, and yet what people don't see is the hard work that's put in and so many years in the minors and, and modeling so many different uniforms. Did you keep track of how many uniforms you modeled over the years <laughs> in professional baseball? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. One season, I think I was with five different organizations, which – I, I even tried to, you know, point, paint that in a in a good light. I remember after that season thinking, well, most of the guys playing, I've either played against them or I've been a teammate at this point. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it, it teaches you to roll with the punches. And I mean, you know, that, that's another example of life. Life's going to throw you some things, and sometimes it's going to get you down. That's okay, but you got to roll with the punches and get back up and keep going. So uh, nobody wants to be in the big leagues and then get sent down to the minor leagues, but. If that happens, hey, we're here. Let's get better. And when the opportunity comes for me to move up, let's let's you know learn from it and get better from it. And uh, that's all you can do. What about the Olympic experience? Phenomenal. You know, it's funny um, in Louisiana. You know, obviously people want to talk LSU and they think it's cool that I'm on baseball cards and, and played in the big leagues. But hardly anybody ever mentions playing in the Olympics. But I, I am just as proud of that as anything I've ever sure. done. Um, I, I, and for it to be in our country, you know, I got to play in Atlanta in 96 oh, wow. in the Olympics. And so, I, I mean, I, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. You run out on that field and this was in Fulton County stadium where the Braves used to play, and, sure. you know, 50,000 people chanting USA and you've got that across your chest. I mean, you just, you talk about the pride and, and just, uh, you know, just, just the feeling that, you know, this is really happening. And, uh, you know, I, the, the medal, we did win a bronze medal, which I may tell a little fib one day and tell my grandkids it's a gold medal because it does look kind of gold. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you it was just a bronze. tremendous experience. <laughs> yeah, right. It was a tremendous experience. And, uh, you know, just to represent my country and, and to be able to do that against 
um, and see in other sports and be around the greatest athletes on this planet. Um, you know, something that you prepare for, we prepared for it for two summers and it comes and goes quick. It's like two weeks, but, uh, those memories, I'll never forget that. Who are some of your teammates on the Olympic team? Um, well, you know, R.A. Dickey, who won the Cy Young a few years ago, had a knuckleball pitcher, believe it or not. He was, he was, he was with us. Jason Williams, that played with me at LSU, was our shortstop. A.J. Wow. Hinch, you know, who was with the Astros the manager. when they won the World yeah. Series, was there. Uh, yeah. Troy Gloss, Jock Jones. We had a really good, good team. And we were kind of the last group that was, were amateurs, so we were all college guys. Um, the next Olympics, they allowed like minor league players to play. So, uh, you know, it, it was neat to kind of still be almost kids, still college kids. And, you know, we're playing against teams from Cuba and Australia. And some of those were grown men, you know, 30, 32, 35 year old guys out there playing yeah. against us. But we, we held our own and, uh, you know, just proud of the effort. Had a great coach. Coach Bertman was our coach. So it was special. Lauren, you have, of course, never shied away from sharing your testimony. I've seen you do that on several occasions and hearkens to the scripture, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, which says, if you proclaim me before my father in heaven, I'll proclaim you. If you proclaim me before man, I'll proclaim you before my father in heaven. But if you deny me, I'll also deny you. So when given the opportunity, you you accept it. You, you seldom, if ever, turn it down, correct? No, I, and I love to share my story and um, you know, I get opportunities to speak for lots of different events, um, you know, schools and things. And my favorite uh, is, is, like you said, when I get to speak for a group, um, you know, and, and I get to share my faith. And uh, really, that, that to me, that's the full story. You know, they, they made an SEC little 30-minute, SEC Network 30-minute special about that season, and it was great. You know, I think I was very proud that they did a great job. But that didn't tell the full story because they didn't really bring the faith factor in there. So right. to get the full story, you've you got to go back to, you know, the, my, my testimony and, and the fact that, you know, I gave my life for Christ. And then, you know, I just I turned everything over to him. And, you know, everything that happened, it, it wasn't really my doing. It was all his plan. And uh, I was just kind of a, 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 a did my best and, and used the talents he'd given me to, to push forward what, what he had in store. Good word, man. Very good word. Thank you. Wow. Well, uh, it's one of these things now. We live in a culture and we <laughs> live in a society where now it, it's not fashionable to share. Uh, in fact, it's oftentimes you, you draw derision, if not outright hostility, yeah. for doing so. But we have to cling to Romans one sixteen about not being ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God until salvation. Everyone who believes, the Jew first and also to the Greek, we find ourselves in that realm right now, Warren. It's it's really a battle for not right. just our souls and, and winning people to Christ, but it's a battle for our own survival in this this world we live in now based upon the way things are trending. And you know, I try not to make too much of it, and I know that the Lord is in control, but that said, we, we really are in a battle, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it's, it's true. You talk about, you know, putting on the spiritual armor and, you know, the fact that there are forces out there that are against what we believe and, and against uh, pushing forward God's will and, and, and spreading the, the gospel or, uh, throughout our, our country or our world. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I, I know the, the powers and the, the uh, what's behind us and, and God's power is stronger than anything that the devil sure. can put in our way. And, uh, right. You know, it, it's kind of up to us, or, or, or like you said, that verse early on, and we're not to be timid. You know, the question is, am I going to be afraid and, and you know, not right. stand forth, or am I going to, you know, stand forward? And I, I've always found that really my, my job is to take the first step. If I just right. take that first step, God says, I'll take you from here. I'll give you the words to say, give you the power to do it. But uh, he's not going to push us. He, he, he wants us to take that first step, and if we're willing to do that, the sky's the limit on what he'll do. 
you know, this is a this is a, an unusual time we're living in. You know, the legal term you know, there's no is is, a, is is precedent. That's how they make judgments and how they make decisions. But we we don't have precedent for walking through what we've been walking through the last six to eight months right now. And the upheaval is everywhere. In fact, you talk about how proud you were just to have USA on your chest. Uh, that's even questionable to people today. And we things are so unusual. Uh, we have to know. We have to know who we believe in and what we believe in and and if we look at what we see right now we'll get fearful we'll, we'll take our eye off the ball like peter man take our eyes off him and we start sinking so i think the i think the word that sustained you as a kid i think the word it's great the home run's a great story but the real story is 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 the testimony that sustained you even when you were injured and technically you weren't even you weren't even strong enough probably especially in your hands and your wrists to to be able to do that and you got to know during that time, that's when the torment comes and the discouragement comes. So I think that's the testimony. Yeah, and uh, you know, and and just you know, looking back through those times, I think we all uh, I heard someone say one time, we we should have trophies up where we can see because those are reminders of times whenever you know God lifted us up and did great things. Right. And yeah. whenever we're going through tough times, I know I whenever I'm going through something rough, I, I can look back on those times. And and see how okay God helped me through that. I know He's there with me now and continue Good through. Word. So, you know, dur- during these times, I think it, it's a reminder that uh, I mean, it, it, it's front and center. You see it on TV. It's all around us, and sometimes I think it's a little overwhelming. But yeah. we'll just step back and realize, you know, we have been through maybe nothing like this, but we've been through other uh, rough times and rough patches. And God had a plan. And oftentimes in my life. He does the greatest works right after, you know, a tough time. And, and so it's just a matter of, uh, you know, you never know what's around the next step. You never know what the, tomorrow the dawn may bring, and that day may be the day that changes somebody else's life or you, you're introduced to somebody that maybe you can, you know, invite them to something at a church or something that, that it may change their family and the rest of their eternity. It's just so, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, you know, um, all we can do is one day at a time and, and just – keep our focus on on him through it all back to baseball about about a minute or two left with warren morris michael and i are both big baseball fans we watch major league baseball all the time and of course these are unprecedented times and an unusual season to say the least and yet one of the things i i don't like all the changes that have been made in baseball i don't like the expanded playoffs now i understand these are different times i get that i don't like the extra inning situation with putting a runner at second base. I don't like the limited visits to the mound. Uh, I don't like, I don't like the DH uh, being now played in both leagues, whereas it's split most of the time. I think it should be uniform regardless. It is right now, but only because of the circumstances. I just think it's a very good game. If you're all worried about it being three and a half hours, that's American league baseball. Then don't watch. A lot of people do Uh, just your thoughts about all these changes that have taken place in the game personally i'm not a fan yeah i mean i i see why they've made the changes you know it, it, in the end it's a business um but you know it's kind of a tricky situation because you're talking about a sport and a uh, a part of our culture that's i mean it's been around you know i, I always say you know, the, the day that uh, Custer got beat at the Battle of Little Bighorn, if you go <laughs> pick up a paper the next day, there's a story in there about the a baseball game, Cincinnati and New York. So, you know, it's been around <laughs> for ages, and when you start changing that, um, you know, you, you're kind of messing with something. Why Don't mess a good thing up. Um, but I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not as big a fan of, you know, putting new rules and having a runner on second base. Um I, I guess I, I, I do see the the reason is they feel like um, less people are watching and you know that's affecting revenue and they're trying to get more excitement into the game. I'm okay with the speeding it up part. Um, I don't have a problem with you know them having a clock in between innings and all of that. But uh, yeah, sometimes I do think they go a little overboard on on trying to do too much just to cater to everyone because. I would say the majority of diehard, longtime baseball fans would be in agreement with you that, you know, hey, let's keep it the way it is. We like it that way. Well, I'll tell you what, I do a lot of games 
on the high school level too now. And you talk about bad stuff filtering down when you've got not only a designated runner for a pitcher, but a designated runner for a catcher and, and moving guys in and out like that. I right. Just, I just think it's, it's a little bit ridiculous and it's not the nature of the game. I don't mind the speeding up uh, part of it so much really at all. I just don't like the way. The thing I loved about baseball was you got true champions, 162 games. I don't mind the wild cards, but now you're expanding that, and and now it's you know you don't earn your way in, and the lesser team can easily win, in particular in baseball, or more than any other sport, because the team could be playing well at the right time, and good pitching will always stop good hitting. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, goes back you, to you know, it, 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 it's a. Uh, um, you know, it's just it's a game that uh, you know it, it teaches you to overcome failure and not let the that get you down. Right. I mean, it still blows my mind that you think about the best of the best, the Hall of Famers, bat three hundred or so, which means they fail seventy percent of the time. But yeah, that's the best. I mean, you know, I don't, you'd be hard pressed to find any other sport or activity where you could fail seventy percent of the time and still be considered great. So it's a special, it's a sense. unique game, but it's special. You know, it's got one-on-one features, but it's still a team game. So, uh, you know, I, I, I love it. And uh, I think the more that, uh, you know, we, we push it and the, the more that we kind of keep it uh, fun for the kids um, and, and include as many kids as possible, you know, I'm, I, I, the, there's a lot of travel ball going on, and I, I have no problem with that. But I, I don't like the fact that sometimes that's pushing out the little leagues, and now you've got kids that can't play to can't afford to play travel ball. They just right. give up baseball, so now they're playing football and, and basketball. Um, you know, I think you we know. need as many kids as we can play in baseball. It's a great sport. Like I said, it teaches you tons of life life lessons. Right. Even if you never play beyond your, you know, twelve, uh, you know, twelve year old year, you're going to have some things that you're going to use later in life. You know, you talk about the travel ball thing from what from the position of what we do, and it's a it's been a conversation of church guys for years. That has also not only robbed kids from little league, but it's, it's robbed them from church involvement and even something simple as a, a Sunday school or a group where they can gather with kids and and hear the word there. So, uh, Kenny, you know what we're hearing? We're hearing a grown man. We're hearing an adult. We're hearing an established businessman, uh, a, a good father, a good husband, but the, and the, he still has the heart and spirit of that guy. Uh, with that grin on his face, uh, circling the bases with both hands up in the air, I still hear that. I still hear that sound in his voice. Yeah, and, he, and we certainly do. And he he also really taught us a valuable lesson on what a hammock bone is. So yeah, I, yeah, I I, that, that threw me. Yeah. <laughs> I learned all about. I've never that heard hammock. of it before either. <laughs> yeah, don't act like call, you did. I've been yeah. calling base. I've been calling baseball games my whole adult life, and and did AAA games for many many years here with the New Orleans Zephyrs and. And, yep, figured that one out pretty quickly, and then it became a fashionable <laughs> injury after that. So you Kenny thought that famous. was something you put in the red beans when you make it. That's what exactly, he thought. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you helped make that famous, so congratulations. You did that well. <laughs> but you, you, you did something else that someone, you know, people that love LSU will never forget. Nope. But the thing that's beautiful about it is Great memory. We'll, we'll watch that over and over again. Yeah. Wonder how you did it with that hand and wrist, and wonder how you did it hitting into the wind as it was that particular day at Rose yeah. Blatt. And then and the first know, pitch, we all know the answer to that. And the answer is because all things are possible in, in, in God. And we all know what your faith is about and, and how it sustained you and how you've used that for the glory of the Lord. And listen, we appreciate that. Appreciate you and appreciate the time tonight. We're going to have to get you for a significant outreach sometime in the near future when things calm down a little bit. But in the meantime, may God bless you and your wife and your girls and, and stay safe. And, and uh, listen, keep sharing the word every chance you get. Oh, uh, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on, and thank you for what you do. Uh, nothing better than uh, using your, your talents to spread the word as well. So I appreciate you, and you invite me to be on. Thank you, Warren. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Warren Love Morris. you. The LSU legend. Thank Warren you, guys. From Alexandria, Louisiana. Thanks, what a, Warren. And what a moment. Yeah, great guy. Just to, you can tell the sincerity in his voice and the peace yeah. uh, that permeates his existence, too.